we're going to do a booth tour for Edge Impulse at Embedded World 2025. I don't know where it's going to lead us, but let's just go and see what happens. That's a nice demo. Come and visit Edge Impulse at 4505 at Embedded World 2025. Why is Manny from Qualcomm on your booth? Maybe he can explain. Sure. <laughs> so, so first of all, Qualcomm is a semiconductor company, right? And uh, we build semiconductor with all sorts of compute and AI performance uh, that can process all, all kinds of sensor modalities, uh, whether it's vision, language, speech, audio, uh, now large language model, vision language models, um, and so that's, that's what we do. I mean, why is it important to us? Because if you think about all of this data that comes from the sensors, you take that data, you generate these insights from that data, and that's where you generate value for the, uh, the companies and the enterprises. That's what digital transformation is all about. Data, insight, value, right? So in order for us to enable our customers, our partners, and the broader general community of developers, we need to provide them the right set of tools because machine learning is hard. You yes. Believe it or not, it's hard. Um, Although when you wander around a show like this, everybody just throws out and go, oh, machine learning. And you go, no. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> unless, it you, hard. unless you say the words AI and machine learning, you obviously don't know what you're talking about right. in the world. Right. They just throw those words out there. Right. But yes, keep going, sorry. Yeah, so it's hard, but it's hard. It doesn't have to be hard provided you have the right set of tools. And that's why I'm here. We, we acquired Edge Impulse. We made an announcement yesterday. So we're super thrilled to have Edge Impulse on our side because now we have a platform that as uh, Sergi was telling you, it takes the data and it goes all the way to the deployment. Yep. You have the data, the ability to create data, uh, pre-process the data, you know, um, process the data and create a model tune the model, optimize the model, deploy the model in an easy fashion. I think these are steps sometimes people uh, underestimate as to how much effort it goes into building a right model. Not for just playing around with it, but actually for production. Thank you for the introduction Thank and you. wish you best of luck with your partnership. So this is a great demo showing like running on device VLMs. Uh, so it has actually three steps. The first step is to detect the object, in that case the cars. Then we apply some post-processing algorithms uh, to track the object within the frame. So if you move, for example, the, the car, it will oh, just- Oh, they're in there? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? The model cars. Show us again, go on. Right, excellent. So, so keep track of the, of, of, the, of the car. And then on top of that, uh, we run a, a VLM model uh, that you can use to get some extra information uh, from the device, such as the, the car manufacturer, uh, the color, uh, eventually some sign uh, that are written on the, on, the, on the car. So this is great. It actually shows like a, a multi-step. Uh, it's a multi, you're, you're take, you, so you're, you've got the same, I'm going to use phrases that I don't understand. So Louis, just forgive me, forgive me. But it's the same data set, isn't it? If you like. The moving cars, but you're taking in different details and different types of data exactly from the same thing. That's what you're showing yeah. here. So we actually have two models here. One is object detection, and the second one is a VLM that contains already some information. Uh, for example, it can extract the, from the logo like uh, the brand of the car. So here, for example, it's a Volkswagen. Yep. This is something like we haven't trained the model to do it. it just package within the knowledge of the vision model. Right, so where does that, forgive me, but where does that knowledge come from? Or do you bring that down and it sits there and it waits, so it's already a preset, you've already given it the preset idea, exactly. you're going to be looking at cars, so it, although it doesn't recognize that, it's recognizing it. No, for the, for the VLM, it knows already that it's a car, so. No, I know that it, it knows it's a car. It has plenty of knowledge. Yes. So it has not been fine-tuned on, on a specific use case, just part of the knowledge that the model has. The cool thing about this is that we first use a very lightweight object detection model before we do the heavy work of running a VLM, right? right. So the first model is like, okay, there's a car, that's all I know, crop it. 
put it here and then we use the VLM to analyze that image without having the VLM do the heavy lifting or anything like that. So okay. we, we cascade the models. We first use one model for one purpose and then another and then another. Because VLM are extremely greedy. So there's layers. You're, you're describing yeah. layers, aren't you? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Because so VLMs are greedy in terms of resources, so there is no point in running the VLMs continuously. You just need to run them once, once something happens. Right. So imagine you have a device on the field that's running on battery. You don't want to no, be running. No, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you run lightweight models that do one thing, and these models are the ones that are like, all right, we'll continue with more analysis or not. You have a threshold and so on. Right. So that's, yeah. Yeah, so, so the point of this demo is to show you get different varieties of looking at data, you get different varieties of looking at patterns of data, but you're not deploy, deploying all that machine learning all at the same time, because it's going to use up power, it's going to use up computing power, and it's going to use up code, basically. So you just use it when you need it, and that's what's going on that with this demo. Right, yeah. Good. Right. Good Thank you, Louis. In this section, I'm going to show you how easy it is to collect to collect some time series data, upload it to the dashboard, and then easily train a machine learning model that's optimized to run on the device. Excellent. The so first section is we can collect some data with this Thingy53 here. And I could pick any data that I want, but I'm going to pick accelerometer data. Let's start sampling. So it's quite important, this, because when we talk about machine learning, when we've talked to Edge Impulse in the past, we've talked about the perception is get as much data as you possibly can all the time. And at what point do I start doing my machine learning? And what Edge Impulse say is, don't worry about that. We can work with actually quite a small amount of data. So this is just a good example of you've just started collecting some data. Yeah. You've just gone, right, let's start collecting data. Yeah. So carry on mode, please. Yes, yeah, so you can just Focus on your own problems and we will handle everything else, which one of it is data collection. So here, I do two taps, as you can see, and data is collected up here. You can see my taps immediately onto the dashboard. Right. Now, if I collect a bit more of that, then I can go onto the dashboard, train my, right. my model. So, so is, this a, this is a typical environment when you use Edge Impulse? Yes. This, this, is, what, this, this is a typical thing typical that you would find, yeah. Yeah, an environment or a dashboard, whatever you call it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And easily by just clicking some buttons, I can make a model. Now, I've prepared this, which I just literally trained it similarly. Which, so it just took that little bit of two taps of data. Uh, well, I've trained this based on the vibrations of this DC motors here. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, I've collected some data, similar as you have seen. And this model is now deployed and is running on this device, which is battery powered, very low power, yep. and is able to detect different patterns of vibrations on this DC motor. Right. So that's a typical industrial motor yeah, industrial running motor. away. Yeah. And, it's, and this thingy is listening exactly. to the vibrations. Yeah. And the sec so when you did that, sorry, that wasn't, that's my fault, so I wasn't following. But you were just showing the example of the tap to get the data exactly. in. Exactly. There we go. If only I could keep up with these videos. <laughs> and then what you're then showing is that same thing, doing the same thing, listening to the vibration of the motor. Exactly, yeah. So this doesn't have any connection, physical connections yep. to the, any wires or nothing. This motor driver is going to generate different motor patterns, different speeds, as you can see. And this starts now detecting. It says blue color. So the pattern number one is blue color. It's only from the vibrations. Now, if I go mode number two, it goes amber once it settles now, eventually. As you can see there, so we have number one, number two, and now this, the last one, number three, is the green colors. Different pattern of vibration that is hardly noticeable for humans, but this is very sensitive. So was that predetermined, or was it just sensing something different? It was always a predetermined... No, these three modes are predetermined. They're predetermined, yeah. right. Now, imagine an industrial scenario. You have wheels, conveyor belts, and everything, and something out of expectation happens and something goes wrong. Which is the whole point of all this yeah. stuff. So that's what we call anomaly detection. Here, imagine this blue tack got stuck to my industrial motor wheel. Yep. Just put it in there, tiny bit, 
again hard to notice for humans. Yep. Okay. This is red now. Right. A tiny bit more, yeah. So it's just the amount of vibration changes here and it puts it out of the balance. Absolutely, yeah. which is subtle. Yeah, it is very subtle. You, visually, you can't see it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what happens when it goes into there? Yeah, so now here so we what, have... My, my point is, that's a very good example of taking in data, it knowing what it's expecting, seeing something it doesn't expect, and saying there is a problem. Yeah. That's great. How then do, using Edge Impulse, do I then analyze that and see what's going on? That's what I'd like you to show you. Yeah, so in that case, we will, we have this feature called uh, model monitoring, which on certain devices, you can connect them back to the dashboard. And in case of anomalies, it will just send the data up to the dashboard. You'll have more data to train them and put a new model, download it to the old, old wireless and without any efforts, yeah. Right. That's all available. Very good. So the beauty of this demo is this is a very typical Nordic type application. Yeah. It's just sitting there quietly, not doing anything, not using any power. Yeah. You've, you, you, you've predetermined the, the, the model. Yeah. You've predetermined what, you, what that motor sounds like or the vibrations it gives out. You've already decided that. And then as soon as something goes wrong, it recognizes it because it's not because of it's not doing what you think it should yeah. be doing and then it tells you we have a problem exactly yeah perfect that's a very very simple but quite beautiful little demo of how you take in data learn from it and then see how something's changed yes yeah exactly thank, thank you very you. much very good thank very you. good ivan tell us about your cascading demo of course. Uh, so what we're showcasing here is a new device from ST with an NPU on it that allows us to run two machine learning models in one device, a cascade of an object detector and a visual anomaly detector. Both of these models are built in Edge Impulse, which is the platform that allows you to collect data, to label the data, train your models, and de de deploy them to all kinds of different hardware. That's how we can deploy this object detection model that I collected some data for beforehand that runs on the NPU here. And this model is made to detect when a coffee capsule is passing on a conveyor belt. Now when that happens, we're taking that coffee capsule out and pass it to a second stage model, a visual anomaly detection. It's trained also in Edge Impulse on a data that looks like this. We're feeding it only normal images. It learns what's normal and then it detects whatever is not normal. So whenever something anomalous happens on the line, <laughs> it's a broken capsule. Exactly. We're passing it here and we pick up the same object, but now we can see that the anomalies are picked up. Something is wrong. This way we will know that whether we have a wrong object or a bent object or a damaged object, something like this. Both of these run in parallel on one MCU grade device made possible by training and deploying with Edge Impulse. Right. Explain to me why you need two things going on at the same time. So this approach is helpful when you have um, something that happens all the time, like you need to detect and count objects, but only sometimes for some objects you need to do anomaly detection. I have a second class of an object here. Yep. I'm not interested in anomalies for this, but I still want to track it. No, but it's not what you're looking for. Exactly. So now I see it, but I'm not passing it to an anomaly detector. I don't need anomaly detection for this object. So I can decide at runtime what to do and how to smartly utilize my resources by calling the second model whenever I need it. We have the same concepts with different models like the VLMs and object detection as well. But in this case, it's very interesting that you can cut out the object of interest and then pass it to the second model. In summary, if you're thinking about doing learning from machine learning and you wonder where you should start, go and play with Edge Impulse, learn about what could be a very, very small amount of data, see how it learns, see how you can compare data, and then move on and do more complicated things like cascading. How exciting. Cascading. It sounds good. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come and visit Edge Impulse at 4505 at Embedded World 2025. Edgeimpulse.com. Edgeimpulse if you're watching this in 2026, it's too late. <laughs>